Well, I'm here this morning with John Eldrin from the Old Sacred Land Trust, and we're at the Ayers Point property. And uh, John was nominated by Judah Preston, who's uh, very active in the uh, Old Sacred Land Trust community. And uh, John was very instrumental in uh, getting the funding and doing all the paperwork for the purchase of the property. So, John, why don't you tell us the story? Um, this property was on and off the market for years. Um, about five or six years ago, Min Huang from Connecticut DEP, uh, head of bird migratory uh, division, contacted the town if they had a property that would be suitable for a grant he was applying for. And uh, Carl Kutuda, the selectman, uh, contacted us when I came up with this place. So the initial go around, we raised enough money in the first two years to buy the property. We ended up not getting it. Uh, the owner backed out at the last minute. And so it, we took it off the market. And then about two and a half, three years ago, it came back up again for sale. So we contacted Maine. His $50,000 grant was still available. Um, Connecticut Audubon had a grant a lot bigger than the first time around. The second time, they, they administer the ILF fund. That is, uh, developers pay into this fund if they're approaching our wetlands to protect other wetlands. Um, initially, we had 176,000 from them. The second time around, it was only 62,000. Um, so we started doing some fundraising. We ended up over. We, uh, we had matching grant from Lower Connecticut River's Gateway Commission uh, for a good chunk of money. Uh, it was a matching donation, and we raised over 90,000 private donations. And so last winter, Last fall, last winter, you're still short from the 8,000. So we contacted uh, Middlesex Community uh, Foundation, Foundation yeah. and they administer fund for birders, yeah. uh, general fund. So we, it was, they were supposed to apply in the spring. They did an emergency thing. We had a Zoom meeting. One of the people on their board was Christine Cummings. Okay. And she was instrumental in getting that put So, how many acres? 11 acres, about 5 acres of grassland, and uh, whatever, 5 acres of a park where the right. ladies are. Yeah. Uh, what is critical about this is it's one of the few places in town that will allow for uh, large migration as climate change happens and river, uh, the water levels start increasing. It can gradually move up into other areas where most of the places in town have hard, uh, you know, embankments or whatever that the marsh can't go anywhere. So that's one of the critical things there. Now, this is a part of uh, your other request reported. Yep. And this area is also very conducive um, to to yeah. identifying and, and migrating birds. Yeah, we are. One of the reasons why this property was important to me is um, we do our Christmas bird test here. And this was traditionally Roger Perry Peterson's and Noble Proctor's, his best friend, um, their starting place. So about 20 years ago, I started with my son, with Noble, and a couple other people. And this is where we'd always start our Christmas bird count, most favorite. Sometime last Sunday, December, the first Sunday of January. And uh, it was incredible how many birds are still around in that cold yeah. weather. So what was the most common bird? Um, well, there's always all kinds of blackbirds here. Uh, there's a little mark right here, the beginning of the high creek. Uh, rusty blackbirds, which are pretty rare in the state. 
Uh, we put snipe and rip top in here and rail through here. So this is a very important habitat. Yes, uh, for bird migration. Yes. And, and um, that's and why it's for habitat too. Uh, yeah. There's uh, salt box sparrows that live in here. That would be, they're getting very close to being endangered. They're species of concern. You have been very active in, in encouraging young people to be aware and involved in the environment. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's probably what most proud of the shepherds and scouts. They get all the nature mirror pouches. And when I left scouting, I joined the land trust, but I was transitioned, so I helped uh, probably on some great different eagle projects from putting up bat houses in town to uh, uh, fish line collectors through all the different spots. Um, some Girl Scouts I helped with uh, doing horseshoe tab uh, and flats, whatever, um, through all the beaches in town. And prior to the land trust, I did a project limulus at a sacred university, which is a tag and horseshoe drops. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're doing it now with oak. We just give the voice out to kids, kids outreach education okay. program, okay. outdoor action kids. Um, we get sometimes 80 to 90 people at Harvey's Beach in town. And it's really cool that stuff. I know myself, growing up, I was afraid of portrait traps. They had that big <laughs> spiky tail, and they just looked really weird. Well, I learned that, that there's nothing on them that can really hurt you. Yeah. Well, if their tail is stopping, be sticking up out of the sand, you yeah. step on it. But to see little kids, you take one, and I'll show them the underside, and show them that you can just reach in there. They have no claws that can bite you at all. So yeah. They're just totally harmless. And a couple of times, as I'm saying that they're totally harmless, they're, they're I'll not getting my fingers caught between the two shells. <laughs> Next thing you know, the blood is spurting out. <laughs> I just told them it's totally harmless, but that was always my fault. But uh, a girl who is helping me now, assistant, um, she's going to the South School to do Haven. Yeah. And she's going to major in environmental science. Uh, Previous girl that assisted me, um, he's helped with the tagging. Um, she got a degree uh, in marine biology and was working for the Connecticut Deep, the marine division for a while. And now she's up in New Hampshire working. Okay. Uh, another boy uh, that was in scouts that always would come out birding with us do the Christmas bird count. He works for the New York uh, Fish and Wildlife. So you had a big impact on. Uh, young people getting involved in environmental sciences and yeah, and, and even if they didn't get a career out of it, I hope that you know just kind of waken their interest to see nature a little bit differently than you know just hanging inside playing video games and things. Okay, very good. Well, John, it was a pleasure to meet you. Congratulations you. on receiving our award. Yep. And uh, you know your your whole breadth of involvement with the Carnival Saber for the environment is worthwhile for the tool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very honored. This is a big surprise. Well, well earned. <laughs>